Hey friends, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my first ever 24 hour reading vlog. <laughs> Unfortunately, it happened at the worst time of the week. It's a Friday, right before like the long weekend, which I'm like, the reason why I did this, but it happened to be the longest day at work today. And I don't want to stay up 24 hours over the weekend because I want to recover. But I thought I'd take this long weekend to catch up on some arcs of mine. I fell extremely behind on arcs a couple months ago and I haven't had a chance to read any of them yet and I would like to keep my net galley score up, 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 up. It's at 45 right now. I want to get it even higher. So I currently have four books. I even double checked um, my library to make sure I had them. There used to be like five on there, but I think I misplaced one of them or I forgot to download one. Now these all these are all books. Oh, one book is coming out later this month. So I'll get a head start of that. And then one's coming out in August, but I have two books that are currently out right now. So I'm gonna try to get through as much of these as possible. So start off with a list. It's Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. I genuinely have very little, like, I've seen this in the store already. I have no idea what this book is about. It looks like it's high fantasy, it's YA. I'm hesitant because I have had such an issue with YA arcs that I've received recently, like YA, YA high fantasy arcs that I've received recently, it's put me in quite a slump, which is why I haven't read a ton of YA fantasy as of recently. So I'm hoping to get back into, or fantasy even, it just put me in a really bad slump. So hopefully this will be one of the books that'll keep me out of the slump because I just got myself out of it. Hopefully it won't push me back down. The next one is Young Blood by Sasha Lawrence. This is out July 19th, so coming out soon. This is another YA, I want to say urban fantasy. I believe it's a school with vampires. I'm excited for that one. The next one is It Sounds Like This by Anna Mariano. This comes out August 2nd. Still no clue. I think, it also, I think it's also very queer. I haven't seen the cover in a hot minute. Like I got these books like back in March beginning to like the beginning of the year, I want to say. So then this one is This May End Badly by Samantha Markham. Comes, it's already out, came out April 12th. Again, this also sounds pretty queer, so I am pretty stoked to see what else we can get from it, what what comes of it. <laughs> it's been such a long day, you guys. Like, you have no idea. Like, my entire body hurts with how much, like, like how much I've had to, like, just deal with people and just be, like, a kind and bubbly person when all I wanted to do was throw things because it was getting so frustrating. Um, but I'm home now. Unfortunately, I forgot to charge my Kindle. So it's currently charging right now. It should be finishing up in the next hour. So I'm gonna take this time to take a quick shower, relax some of my bones, get in some comfortable clothing, because right now I'm in jeans and it, this is a very nice tank top. It's a very comfortable tank top. I want to get in something comfortable. Um, I'm gonna spend this last hour working on my bullet journal and just planning for Camp Nano, because it's also the first day. So this will also serve as a 24 hour Camp Nano writing vlog when I can squeeze it in to kind of break my eyes from one world to another. So I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna spend most of the night planning and then think places since it's a, four day, it's a three day weekend, I will have the opportunity to catch up to Camp Nano. But I wanna work on my bullet journal primarily and then Camp Nano in like this next hour, hour and a half after a shower. So I'll catch up with you guys once I start um, reading, relaxing a bit more because I feel so wound up right now. It's just, it's time, but it's fine. So I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. This has been a really long intro, so, and I'll give you guys more updated um, synopses on the books once I start them. Another lazy afternoon, the clouds covered in gray, third coffee of the day. Almost fell asleep on soon, I yawn at the display, third meeting of the day. It's now 8.15-ish. It took me a while because I 
took a lot longer shower than I probably should have. Um, and then I wanted, while I was working on like update, like writing and all that stuff, I wanted to wait for dinner because I wasn't gonna be able to read without dinner. So it's fine. Okay, I'm gonna look up this synopsis. Just set y'all down so I have more mobility. Okay, so Young Blood is basically lesbian vampire boarding school. We have that option. And this is about, oh, it's not gay. This is about fake dating, pranking, and boarding schools. Lots of boarding schools this time around. It sounds like this. And there we go. This is band camp, actually. It is band camp. The freshman year means mastering the marching side of marching band. Outshine her BFF, harassing band members. Huh. You know. Oh, this one's not queer, but this one does have um, arrow. Oh, it is queer. It has arrow ace um, representation. That one sounds interesting. It's like a very quick read. And then the last one is magnifique. Oh, it's hotel magnifique. Sorry. Okay, so this seems like a little bit of, huh, that one also sounds interesting. Okay, I'm kind of torn between reading It Sounds Like This just because it's the summertime right now and why not relive my high school trauma of band by reading a book about band? Or I kind of want to read Hotel Magnifique because that sounds really cool too. But I kind of want to just like warm myself up to something as high fantasy as that one. So I think I'm gonna start with It Sounds Like This. So I'll keep you guys posted on what happens as I read the book. This bitch is a flute. She's a flute player. I was a flute player in high school. I didn't do flute during marching band though, which is when she's doing flute because I knew, not really, I didn't like band my first semester, but I knew deep down that playing flute in marching band was a pain, so I switched over to pit. She ain't ki they, she ain't kidding when she says that play being a flute player is highly competitive. There's a very good reason, because a lot of people pick flute. Lots of people pe people pick flute. The problem is, those same people, not that good at flute, because flute is very like this heavy, and this it's just very this heavy. Like one toot wrong, and you sound like the worst thing in the world as someone who had many toots go wrong while playing the flute. God, I wasn't prepared for this trauma today. He's reading the book too. Or, it's in the book too. Alrighty, I am about a quarter of the way through the book, 28%, on chapter seven. Thoughts so far that it's definitely meant for a lot younger of an audience. And that's not a bad thing. I'm now 25 reading a book where the girl is set as a sophomore in high school. I haven't been a sophomore in high school in um... In almost 10 years. In about 10 years. Oh god. So I'm perfectly aware that it's not meant for me. I'm not supposed to like be understanding or be very like into what Yasmin is trying to do. However, I will say that she is just, even for like a, a sophomore in high school, she still feels very immature. Not in the sense that she tried to stop a hazing situation from happening, but in the sense that like, there's always this weird unspoken rule about, like at least on my end, that we don't really, we never try to talk terrible about each other's boyfriends until they have done something terrible. But not only that, she she's very like she needs to be the number one she needs to be the top and there are a lot of obvious issues like at home because of that of like that have l left her wanting to be the top wanting to be the first but i don't know something about her character like it's not so much that she's immature or that she reads young but something about it just doesn't sit right with me she's a very sense of superiority i guess which I think is something for my own personal trauma of band, where a lot of band kids tend to gain a sense of superiority and just sense of righteousness almost, that I'm just like, oh my god. But my candle's at 27%, so yay me. It's 26, my bad. So I'm going to try to reach halfway, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, 
char start putting it, start charging it again, and then maybe my boyfriend will be done playing video games with his um, ex roommates to hang out for a little bit before I pick back up. But if not, I'm just probably gonna turn on my podcast for like an hour again, and then just um, work on my bullet journal so my eyes aren't like on the screen. Cause I, even though I want to write but my eyes, I can just feel it. It's been such a long day that my eyes are just exhausted. Taking a break from the screen will probably be the best so I can get some sketches in for my bullet journal because it's July 1st and I haven't done my July setup yet. And it'll also give me time to think about what I want for the rest of the book that I'm planning for Nano, Camp Nano. I have about six chapters, seven chapters planned out right now. Six chapters. Um, so I will just have to see how that goes. God, my head is hurting, my eyes are so tired. <laughs> it's okay, I only have like another 25% to go and then I can take a break. My favorite chiffon dress I don't care today What the neighbors might say Put on my rain boots My favorite chiffon dress I don't care today What the neighbors might say Cause I could stay inside and Type away inside Oh, make a today Just a little legs Monday <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> oh god i'm falling <laughs> <laughs> that was your own fault mm. Mm. no 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 i'm breaking out no oh ew ew i don't want your cooties on me ew Alrighty, i just reached 51 percent kendall is back to charging my boyfriend asked me to turn the AC on, so I'm bundled up in the big blanket in the living room because the AC in this apartment is relentless. I set it to maybe 75, 78, and it's been like 10 minutes, and it's still going. It's definitely showing more signs of like the coming of age that I was looking forward, where it's like kind of like outgrowing your friends, outgrowing your old plans. You're starting to butt heads with your parents a little bit because what they envisioned for you is not what you're realizing you want for yourself. And that you know you are a capable teenager who makes their own decisions and that's about as far as it is i feel like again yasmin kind of still has some growing up to do and it's very obvious that she's very dependent on this idea of like being perfect for her mom of being amenable to um sophia who isn't like the bestest friend to her per se but she's there so i can do the update right now again i'm about 50 percent through and nothing spectacular has quite happened we're learning that um bloom who is jonathan bloom the section leader of the low brass he is arrow ace and we do have he's gray ace i believe and then we have ellen who is um yasmin's si sibling who is non-binary and then i forget who was the gay one I think it's Caleb who is gay. So it's just a very like well-rounded book in terms of sexualities. We have some different ethnicities in there, which is always nice to see. We are talking about the destruction of Hurricane Humphrey um, in Texas, I want to say, was where they're currently at. So we're hearing about the struggle in that situation and then kind of how like the loss of like that kind of year while they're trying to recover, both like in a school and familial and financially kind of hit everyone on several ends, so yeah. 
I am now going to go turn a podcast on. My eye is still hurting me with how tense it is right now. Sherman, you know for a cat who doesn't like looking at his own, he knows when he, he looks away when you get his photos taken, you jump in front of the frame quite a lot. Um, I'm probably going to get my desk, or like my lap desk, because it is too cold for me to sit on the floor right now with how relentless this stupid AC is going. Um, but I will catch up with you guys in probably like an hour, hour and a half at like 11.30 to probably um, read for the rest of the night and probably finish It Sounds Like This. I started this book at like 8.15, halfway through, and it's 10. So I should be done with the book around 1.00. Not bad for me, honestly. And then the next, I'll probably make my way over to um, Young Blood by I think Samantha Markham. Just so, like, kind of like I think what I'm gonna do is do it sounds like this, then Young Blood, then Hotel Magnifique, and then end it with this ends up badly, so I can kind of like work my way up to difficult, like high fantasy, and then slowly bring my way down to like contemporary and end it, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I'll keep you guys posted when I start reading again. Probably when I finish, it sounds like this because my eyes are very tired. And I probably won't have much energy left to update until then, so. Jake? What will they? No, how old are you? <laughs> I'm a child. I'm a man child. It's now Saturday at like 9 30? I thought it was almost 10. Oh, 9 30. Um, I just finished It Sounds Like This. I didn't get a chance to finish it last night because last night Jake ended up getting a lot worse and turn into a migraine, or was starting to, so I just had to go to bed. Um, but I gave it about a three and a half stars. I think it's a good book. It definitely does um, talk a, a lot about like, you know, figuring out your sexuality, crushes, making new friends outside of the friends that maybe you dragged along in middle school, toxic friendships. Um, toxic dynamics and like just kind of growing out of like again the image that your parents taught for you or like had in mind for you that you've been following for years now but again I'm not the target audience for it we're already past that stage at a nice lovely 26 it was a good book I said there were definitely some instances where it's like I think um what's her name Yasmin was definitely trying to be a little, she was definitely a try hard. She was definitely a try hard. She tried way too much to be um, good for everyone, to do the things that everyone wanted her to do, and all that stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and start Young Blood in like, I wanna say 15 minutes, just to give my eyes some rest. I'm almost done setting up my bullet journal. I finished most of the outlines yesterday just to finish my expenses outline, and then I can color that in. And I'll probably do that in the 15 minutes that I have giving myself to break before I start Young Blood. So yeah, I'll catch up with y'all once I start Young Blood and have an update for you guys. It's almost noon, it's like 10-ish till noon, and I'm about 30-ish percent through Young Blood. I have about like another two hours left of the book. 
I'm not vibing with it. I was really intrigued by the idea. I liked that there was a like a disease that's kind of ravaging the vampires that certain humans have like a genetic thing that blocks the ability to make blood clots, which is harmful for vampires. That's how they survive. And then, you know, the school is like super traditional and naturally because we are in a fantastical world that has been revised to include vampires and diseases that don't exist and things like hemo, which is like a, 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 a kind of blood that isn't actually blood. We have to include things like racism and classism and homophobia in this school. There have been a slew of homophobic comments already toward Taylor, who is the only out vampire. A slew of mildly racist comments because there's only like seven black kids in there and because what black kid would want to come to an all-white school where there are vampire families still saying how much they lost during the Civil War. And the misogynistic comments of old teachers being like, girls must wear certain things, they must look a certain way, they must act with a type of decorum. And let's not forget that the only gay teacher at this school is the only one who's pretty radical and thinks that like, with this disease and this sight of like a, a blood alternative where they don't have to keep hunting humans, they can revive, like, reunite humans in vampires and live in harmony. But all the other faculty is there to help find a cure for this disease so they can start feeding on humans again. There have been like comments on diversity points and like the only fact that like the main girl, Kat, who is white, girl in the cover has red hair so she is as white as they can get has been like, oh yeah, have, do they have like any like, why are there like no black kids in the school, it's all so white don't be homophobic, are there any like social justice, like clubs, why do you mean you guys don't have Black Lives Matter and I'm just like, it's all just giving white savior and this writing is certainly a choice. I'm gonna try to get to like 50% of the way and see if it changes or it gets slightly better, but honestly no promises on that with what I've seen so far. And if I don't see any changes in like, by the time I reach like 50%, it's so like in another like hour of reading this book, I'm a DNF and move on to Hotel Magnifique because like, you're writing an entire story about like revising like the world as we know it to include vampires, to include this back world. What's the need to include racism, homophobia, classism, misogyny? Like these, some of these vampires have been alive for so long and you're telling me that they're still so stuck in their old, I, I just hate it. I hate it when these books have to include things like this with no actual commentary to it and no actual like discussions on like the hidden racism and anti-Semitism within, vampi within vampire myth and how like no one's really done that research recently to perpetuate that myth to like stop perpetuating the make, make that myth and make commentary on it. So it's like, it's doing nothing but making this girl look even better because she can rise above the rest because she has a different opinion because she's from Sacramento, California. And there's this whole like mini plot line where the cat gets into this like internship or fellowship or whatever of with Victor Castile who is the one who create who created Hema, who is like the, the, the fake blood that they've been drinking. And within this plot line, we learn that her mom doesn't know who, who her fang maker is, her dad has died, and that she received a generous amount of money from an anonymous benefactor to join this very prestigious and racist as fuck school. So I don't know about y'all, but something is pointing to all my mental faculties and telling me that Victor Castile is his is her mom's fang maker which then in turn makes her one of his only descendants i hate this book so much i have 38 minutes left of this book and i hate it i finished young blood one star one star um i hated it I, I thought I w there would be something that I enjoyed, but I hated it. I would talk more about the obvious racism, classism, bits of misogyny in there. 
um, the homophobia and the weird disease, it's like akin to like HIV and AIDS, but doesn't really get talked about or expel like expounded upon. Same thing with the com the attempted commentary on how academia is so white. But TB convinced me into making this into a rant review, or my thoughts on the book into a rant review. So I will do that. Um, but I hated it. I hated it. I hated. It, I hated it. So now. I'm going to start reading. I am now going to be reading Hotel Magnifique, but I'm going to take a little bit of a breather. Maybe like an hour, 30 minutes, I think. I'm going to take like a nap or something, go for a walk, just kind of take my eyes off a screen, and then I'll start reading Hotel Magnifique, and hopefully it's better than that mess, because I hated it. I'm just gonna think that I just don't wear a shirt. <laughs> okay, it's hot. Okay. <laughs> Gotta let the girls out to breathe. I wasn't gonna touch your nipple this time. I was just gonna jiggle this the time. The booby. This time. <laughs> Nothing like your smile in the morning. Following the linings on your cheeks. Your absence life is boring, so I never leave. It's easier to love when you by my side. Alright, so it's about 6.30. I have about two hours left of the readathon. My <laughs> I took a short nap because I was my eyes were getting a little tired and that took a little longer, so I took a break from like 2.15 to like about 4.30 or 5. I, like, because I ate lunch, then I took a nap, and then my boyfriend and I went for a walk while it was, because it's really nice out right now. It's not too hot. So we're like, a walk, because we've been inside all day. Um, but I did start the book. I'm about halfway, a little over halfway, about half an hour left, according to the audiobook. This book basically follows Jenny, who is interested in this hotel called Hotel Magnifique. It's a hotel that is only there for one night and one night only and travels the world and each guest has about two weeks there that they stay in before they go ahead and when they check out they forget all memories other than the fact that they just had a really good time while they were there. Jenny takes her sister Zoza who is a magnificent si singer to audition and apply but only Zoza gets in. So she kind of forces herself into the hotel as a worker and finds that there's more than just, that it's kind of not the greatest place for people who aren't guests. There's a lot of rules, also restrictions, all that stuff. It kind of gives me um, Harry Potter vibes in the sense that the hotel is ever changing. It changes their um, appearance and the things that it needs according to what the guests need. Very room requirement. And there's also a thing, a hunt that they're doing right now. It's called the artifact that allows a magician to be a souvenir. A souvenir. It sounds like they're saying sommelier, but you know, you're saying souvenir. My French is abysmal at best, so. But it's a souvenir is what they call them, but the, it's an artifact is what allows them to use their magic and become more stronger. Kind of like, um... Um, the Grisha verse where they have the thingies. I never remember what it's called, but they have those little thingies that help them out throughout the world on the screen. When I remember editing Therese, please remember. And they're kind of on the hunt for that because they're not made anymore. No one knows how to make them, but they're the things that make souvenirs really powerful. Um, it also has a bit of like Studio Ghibli vibes, like um, Spirited Away, because she has, she kind of had, they basically have no memory of who they were before this. And won't have memory of who they were before this up until probably like they have to leave in ch as they have they leave and it's very difficult for them to leave like you have there's a lot of rules and regulations for your contract to be up some people never leave no matter how hard they try um, oh and night circus because again it's a magical hotel that's only there for one night it has different rooms that change and things get adjusted as the years as the days go on so it's very much like that i'm enjoying it I'm not the biggest fan of the main character. I feel like the main character 
is a bit like Chihiro in the sense from Spirited Away where she doesn't really know how to keep her mouth shut, doesn't really know how to do much. But unlike Chihiro who kind of finds her speed and her rhythm with it, um, Jenny only manages to get into trouble and into things that she shouldn't have. Um, there is a budding romance because of course it's why we have to have romance. And I'm, there's not a lot of chemistry within the two, um, the two characters. I felt like there's not a lot of, um, not a lot of growth with their relationship. I feel like it's always like they start to get somewhere, and then um, Belle, who is the love interest and is the magnifique part of Hotel Magnifique, who moves the hotel at, at every midnight, is just th then Belle does something that like kind of betrays her or like kind of wrecks her trust for him, and it's just very confusing. But I am really enjoying the world. I like the world that the author has built. It's very fun. It's very, um, it's very expansive and and like just descriptive. So I really do enjoy that world. I think it's very fun to be in. They, it's just, I when it comes to books, especially just books in general, I love a nice like fleshed out character. And right now, Jenny feels very one, very flat. She was only here for her sister only wants to make money for her and just to get out of the place that she's in, um, only wants to get her sister out. That's basically been her motivation this entire time. And she seems to find herself in almost like comical like situations where like if you had listened you would know where not to go but here you are. But yeah that's kind of all that I have so far. I'm probably gonna finish the book pretty soon. I'm 61% of the way through. So then I try to move on and read and read um this may end badly if i have time okie dokie it is now about 15 to 8 so i'm just gonna call it because i don't i just finished hotel magnifique and i certainly do not have time to start and finish this may end badly in 15 minutes i really liked it a four i wasn't expecting to like it but i liked it a lot probably one of the better um high fantasy ya arcs that i've read this year. I ended up giving it a four. I love the world. It was so expansive and so beautiful. Like it was just so well done. I love the magic system. Again, just so well done and well thought out. I really enjoyed plot. I thought the plot was like, it, it kept you at the edge of your seat. You really wanted to know exactly what happened, what was going on. You wanted to really understand the mystery behind the hotel, and if it was like sinister, if there was something beyond that. The only thing that kept me from giving it the full five was that I felt like the characters just felt a little flat to me. Again, I do love well-rounded characters. That's my favorite part of any book. But I think this book was just a little too short for me to really sit down and like get a feel for the characters. That, but I thought that they were all like their baseline ideas. Like, but I think that based on what we're seeing in terms of their personalities, their values, their motivations, and the trajectory, the potential trajectory was there, and I really enjoyed that. I just felt like they felt a little flat, and I wanted to see them grow a little bit more under these harsher circumstances. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. I think I don't think I'll actually buy a copy. I don't think I enjoyed it enough to buy a copy, but I would recommend it. I think if you're looking for something fun, it was a very quick read. Um, the audio, the ebook only had like three hours on the timer for me, so not terrible. I read it in I think like two. I really enjoyed it. I think it was a lot of fun. But to recap all the books that I read versus what I had planned to read, I ended up reading It Sounds Like This by Anna Meriano. I give this a three and a half stars, I believe. I want to say, I don't remember my thoughts. Really enjoyed it. It's very cute. It's very fluffy. Definitely not meant for me. I felt like, again, the character development fell a little flat, but... I enjoyed it, it was fun. Reopening my wounds from high school band. Then the next one I read was Young Blood by Sasha Lawrence, one star. I would have DNF'd it, but if it was like passing by a car wreck or a train wreck, you just wanted to keep watching, which is terrible to say. But I read it, one star, not my favorite out of the bunch, would not recommend it. I will be making a full rant review of this book because it was just like a load of wow underneath a what the fuck. And lastly, I ended up reading Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. This was probably the highest rating out of the, all of them for me. Four stars. I really enjoyed it, as you guys know. Would highly recommend it if you guys are looking for a lighter, more kind of like familiar kind of vibe with the map, 
with the world building. And the only one I didn't get a chance to read was This Ends Badly by Samantha Wilson. This is the YA uh, romance, I believe. Yeah, the contemporary with like enemies to lovers and fake dating, I want to say. I am still going to get to it. it, it it's, al it's already out. It's been out for in July, three months now, almost three months. So I'll be getting to that. I might try to read it over the, the rest of the weekend just because like I said I was going to read it. I need to read it so that way I can just at least, in the slightest, catch up on all my arcs and ask for more arcs in the future. You know, that kind of stuff. But that is it for my first ever 24 hour readathon. I feel like I would have had the chance to read all four books had I um, not ended up with a really bad headache from work and had to go to sleep earlier. I will be doing more 24 hour readathons. Um, I don't know when, but I like to, would like to kind of um, gather some books that I would like to read for that. But I really did, I did like this, I enjoyed it. I think next time I definitely will be making sure that I have an easier day at work so I don't have a headache and I'll have to go to bed at 11.30 when I plan to go to bed at like 1.30 to 2. So yeah. But if you guys like these videos and want me to do more 24 hour readathons in the future, let me know. I try to plan them around like holidays because then I don't have work on like a Monday or a Friday and I can just like binge everything. But yeah, this was a very fun time. I enjoyed it. If you guys like this video, as usual, hit like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Hopefully you all are having a good week, good weekend. Um, stay safe. Bye.